Today's video is sponsored by Hexrays. Whether you're a cybersecurity analyst or somebody who likes to program, learning how to reverse engineer is the best way to get good at computers. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do just that. Now, while reverse engineering real software has ethical and legal implications, luckily the world of hackers have these things called capture the flags, where we have challenges that we can download that are meant to be reverse engineered. In this video, we're gonna do the flag casino challenge from Hack the Box and use it to extract the flag out of a binary that doesn't wanna to know the flag. The flag gets us points and points make me feel good. So let's download the file and see what trouble we can get ourselves into. So what is reverse engineering, right? What is the art of taking things apart and why do we do it? When we download a program, right, we can run the program and we'll see pretty quickly that it wants us to place our bets, right? Put in some number and let's say that my bet is one. Well, unfortunately, my bet is incorrect. Now it's gonna activate the security system and tell me to please vacate. The problem is that I've received for the challenge a file called casino. And I'll move my fat head out of the way and I'll show you that the file casino is just an elf or a binary, which means that if I dump it into a hex editor, it's just a bunch of gobbledygook, right? There's not a lot of information in here that a human can read because the program started as source code and has become machine code for the computer to understand. Reverse engineering is the art of taking that computer code and figuring out what the author intended and then using that to exploit a vulnerability in the program. So what I'm assuming here is that the, the bets I have to place are going to be the flag, right? If I put in the right bets, right, the right number sequence, that will give me the flag and give me the internet points. So let's figure out what's going on in this program. The way that I like to start any CTF challenge is first by doing file on that program to see what I'm dealing with. It's a 64-bit, least significant bit program. Basically, this just means that it was compiled with a modern compiler. Nothing too crazy going on here. What we can also do is run the strings program on this, right? What the strings program does is literally goes through the binary and finds five or more characters that are ASCII printable in a row. The reason that I do this is by reading the imports, the functions that the program uses, I get a general idea of what the program is going to do. We see the function exit, obviously, we have to exit the program at some point. We also are gonna use srand, which is a function that seeds randomness. So what I can already infer is that there's something probably wrong with the way that this program uses srand that will allow me to predict the random numbers and maybe guess the flag. Again, this is a casino problem, right? It's you're at the casino, casinos are random, but if they use S random correctly, we could probably predict the randomness and maybe win some money at the flag casino. And obviously they have puts, which prints to the screen, printf that puts to the screen, and then you have scanf, the function to read data from the user. The strings program will only get us so far, right? Because you know it's not gonna have a string that represents the code that's going on in the program. So instead what we have to do is now take our program and put it into a disassembly framework. The one we're gonna use today is Ida Pro. I love of Ida. I've used Ida for most of my hacking career. I actually learned to hack, learned to RE on Ida back in the day. Do new in Ida, and we're gonna go and find Flag Casino, and then inside Flag Casino, we'll open the problem in Ida. Now, what you're looking at here is the disassembly of the program. So what Ida did is it took the problem and it found all of the computer instructions, the assembly instructions. Now, you don't need to know a lot of assembly to see what's going on here. Like, obviously, you need to know assembly to read this entire thing, but you can see very simple things are happening here, like it calls puts on the string, hello, welcome to Robo Casino. It calls puts on the banner and calls puts on please place your bets. We know these things have to happen because they do happen when you run the program, right? I call these reality anchors, where basically we know that the thing is printed to, to the screen so we can identify in the program where it is printed. Now, what I'm ultimately interested in is this reading part, right? We know based on the strings analysis that the program is going to read in some data via scanf. So what we need to do is find the call to scanf and then see where does it do things with that code. So if we look from the top of the main function, we kind of go down this graph, we can see the call to scanf happening here, right? This is where the user is asked for their input. And so we want to kind of figure out what it's doing with this data. Let's walk the graph. So we print the, you know, the banner of the casino here. Then we compare some variable to hex 1c. That's the number, what, 16 plus 12, that's 28. What I'm gonna say is this is going to be some counter. So I'm gonna go into Ida and rename that to instead of RBP plus some random variable, I'm gonna call it I. When I program in C, I think the variable is gonna be something kind of like an iterator, so I'm gonna call it I. It's gonna compare that to 28. If it's below 28, we're gonna go down here and call printf on this little caret. It's gonna give us the prompt to put in data. And then we're gonna do a percent %c read. It's gonna read a character. It's gonna write it to this location variable five. So I'm gonna rename this uh, user input so that I can easily 
read this. And then it's going to do something with the user input. Now, we could go through and trace the assembly here. I think it is a good idea to do that to learn. But for the sake of the challenge, we're actually going to use Ida's disassembler. What this disassembler here is doing is giving us the best guess at what Ida thinks the C code that created this program looks like, right? We don't actually have the C code, right? We can't have the C code. What we can do is use the symbols from the functions like puts and srand and give a best guess on what the code would look like. And this is actually looking really good. We have I, like some kind of for loop, and then we have the input from the user going into a user input buffer. So what the code does here is it takes the user input and it uses the user input to call srand, and then it checks to see if the next call to random is equal to some check array. And we can see this is an array of characters that we have to hit. srand and rand are a pair of functions that work together. Let's go through and look at the man page for rand. The rand function returns a pseudo random integer in the range from zero to rand max inclusive. And the srand function sets its argument as the seed for a new sequence of pseudo random integers to be returned by rand. So effectively in this program, the user input is given to srand to seed the random number generator, and then it gives a random number and we have to check it against that check value. And if the number is not correct, if it doesn't match that check value, it'll say incorrect. It'll, you know, alert the security system and then the, the challenge will, will exit with a negative two, right? So what we have to do and what likely is the flag for this challenge is figure out what input goes into srand such that the return value from rand is equal to this number here, okay? And what's lucky for us is there's a very small search space we have to iterate over, right? So you'll see here there's a percent %c. Percent %c in c is a character, which means it is a single byte, meaning there are only 256 combinations. So what we can do is write a separate c program and generate all 256 combinations and then use that to programmatically figure out what the flag is for this challenge. Let's go write that code right now. We're gonna use our trusty editor uh, Vim, right? So we're gonna make a new piece of code and we're gonna say from standard io.h import and import also um, standard lib because that's what you need to use, I think, srand. And then what we'll do is we'll make our main function, very simple stuff. And what we wanna do is literally just create what is called a lookup table, right? A lookup table is basically you have a key and an associated value. And the, in this code, the key is going to be all integers from zero to 255, right? Because that's gonna be the percent %c, right? The character input that we as a user can give it. And the value is going to be the random number that's generated if we srand off of that c. way we do this in c is going to be int uh, for int i equals zero, i less than 256, i plus plus, srand of i, so we'll seed it off of that i value. And then we're going to do printf percent d colon percent zero eight x, where we'll print i and then rand of i, right? So we're going to get the corresponding i value and associated random number value that comes out of srand when we seed it off that value, okay? We're gonna use this to figure out what number do we have to put into the program to get it to say correct for one of our inputs. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll gcc the LUT. We'll run LUT.c. And so now what you see is we have a list of characters on the left that give us the associated rand value on the right. So just to test this, again, as hackers, we run little micro experiments to confirm or deny assumptions. If we go into the program, we'll go to the check array and we'll see that this first value, what is this, 244B28BE. Okay, let's see if we can find this. 244B28BE is associated to 72, okay? Now this is just the decimal number 72. What this means is that I have to go through and associate the ASCII value to that number. How do we do that? In Python, we can just do character of 72 and the number is H, right? So the character is H. Now we can confirm this by just running the program again. And if I type H as the first character, it should say that my entry is correct. Please continue. H, correct. Okay, now what does H stand for? The, the challenge is from hack the box, so likely this is gonna be T, gonna be B, right? And so we can go through and programmatically check this. Now what we can do is just extract this data right here, which is going to be the array of checks. And then all we have to do is map the input 
to the output, right? Map all of the keys that we have to their values, and then we can use that to derive the flag. Now, what I wanna do is extract this check array so that I can use the data here that's gonna be somewhere else on my computer. I'm gonna write a little Python script to programmatically go through this data and look it up via our lookup table. So using uh, Python's Ida Python down here, I can use the get bytes command to get the data in the binary at a certain address. We're gonna do get me the data at hex 4080, which is you know the address right here. And the size is gonna be the difference between the two labels, right? So the, the size will be hex 40F4 minus hex 4080, right? And you'll see I got a bunch of gobbledygook, so I can use that and then do dot hex on that data to kind of hex encode it and make sure it's the data that I want. You see that it ends in this 22 here, which is the same as the 22 on the end of this variable. It's little endian, so it's flipped. Um, but yeah, so we can take this, and again, this is Python, so it emits it as a valid Python string that I'm able to now check. So we can put that into our Python script and go do it over there. Okay, so we kind of have two pieces of data we have to associate now, and we'll, we'll, we'll map those all together by going through uh, them in, in Python. So the way we do this in Python is let's call the script getFlag.py. Uh, the first one is we're gonna call it the check data, right, is equal to this blob here, which came directly out of Ida. And then we're gonna have our LUT, which is gonna be equal to just the output of this program, right? This LUT is gonna be literally the association of the ASCII character to the srand value, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll do this. We'll just copy this whole thing. We could open this as a file, but I want to just make it simple for myself right now. And we're just gonna copy it off the screen. And we'll call this LUT, which is gonna be a, uh, a big string like this. Now what I wanna do is parse the LUT here and I wanna make the LUT into a dictionary where I can just look up this value and get the associated key value, right? Or the associated character value. So what we'll do is first of all, say LUT is equal to LUT.split on new line. What this will do is take all the new lines out of this and make it a list of those. And then we'll do for um, element in the LUT, I wanna make a new LUT dictionary. This is an empty dictionary in Python. A Python is a data structure that has a key and value association. So we'll have for element in LUT, what we're gonna do is do, first of all, element is equal to element.split on the colon here, because again, this colon is gonna be the delimiter between the, the value and the key. Then we're gonna say um, LUT D of int of element of one, which is gonna be this, this value here from base 16, because we're taking the string value that is hex, so base 16, and converting that into an integer, and then making that the index, is going to equal, right, the character of element, or character of integer element of zero, right? This will get us the ASCII representation of this value. Now what I can do with this LUT of D is literally put in the random value from the check array and output the character, right? And I can use that to get the entire flag in theory. Let's see what it looks like. Now, kind of the harder part of this is I have kind of all of this data. This this is the ASCII representation or the byte representation of the re these numbers that are in Ida, right? Ida knows their numbers. Python does not know their numbers. So we have to coerce the data to look like the appropriate 32-bit um, values, right? And the way we do this is with a library called struct in Python. Struct basically is a library that allows us to take data that is in some shape and convert it to data in another form. So what we can do is take four bytes of characters and convert them to the associated integer value, right? So what we'll do is we'll iterate over this value, right? We'll iterate over range. So for i in range zero len of check data four, what this gives us is basically a, um, a list of every four elements so we can cut it into pieces, right? So we'll do um, random is equal to check data of i to i plus four, and we're gonna do struct.unpack that data, because it's packed binary data. We're gonna unpack it little endian as an integer, right? What this basically does is say, hey, we know that data is the ASCII representation of little endian numbers, so we're gonna say that and then get that first element out. So let's print rand here just to see if we get the right number. The first number should be, okay, and there we go. So 2442B8E. So now we know we have the numbers as they appear in Ida and they are taken from that check data. What we can do with this is because we have that LUT set up where it associates that random value to the character, we can literally just print the lookup of the LUT D off of rand. 
And you'll see, oh, we're getting something ASCII printable, hack the box rand. Okay, so let's go and instead of printing it, we're gonna put it into a string. We'll do um, flag equals blank. And we'll do flag plus equals rand, let the rand uh, print flag. There we go. Hack the box. Rand is very predictable. Guys, this is the art of, of reverse engineering, right? It's taking a binary where we don't know what's going on under the hood. And then so we figure out what's going on under the, under the hood by using tools like IDA and then using that to infer functionality and find vulnerabilities and make the program do things we wanna do. Now, obviously guys, this is written for the sake of reverse engineering. Go go try to solve this challenge on your own. There are a bunch of good challenges on Hack the Box that I highly recommend that you, you play with a little bit. Now guys, again, today's video is sponsored by Hexrays, the company behind IDA Pro. If you wanna buy IDA, you can use my code lowlevel50 to get 50% off any IDA product, as well as 30% off with lowlevel30 on any of the Hexray Academy trainings to learn how to reverse engineer. guys. IDA is the tool that I use personally to learn RE, to learn hacking back in the day, and it is still today trusted 20 years later by cybersecurity experts, game hackers, and more. Guys, go, go play with IDA. If you wanna to learn to hack, this is the way to do it. I guarantee it. Anyway, Hexrays, thanks again for sponsoring the video. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.